Hi, this is Val from Hi Who, where we look back at games from the past and see how they hold up to current industry standards and trends. Today we are looking at Dragon Age Origins, a Tolkien-esque squad-based third-person fantasy RPG made by Bioware in 2009. Bioware is a big name in the RPG field, making popular and notable games such as Mass Effect, a great series and the sci-fi sibling to Dragon Age, and KOTOR, a Star Wars RPG that set up Mass Effect. RPGs have always been popular, and this year has seen the release of quite a few games claiming the title. But this game came out seven years ago, so when compared to modern mechanics, level design and story, how does it hold up seven years on? I'm going to say quite well. The game is very long, funny, and has a great story with layers of lore you can delve into if you have the inclination. The game has some components that mar the experience, but I believe it is essential gaming for fans of fantasy RPGs. The combat, micromanagement, and menus may create a barrier for some players, and it is something that has been phased out in most modern games. I think that Origins has enough positive attributes that these issues can be overlooked. Just like playing any older game, at first you should allow yourself some time to get used to the amount of micromanagement and customization the game allows the player. In Dragon Age you start by creating a character, picking sex, race, class and appearance. This will determine which of the six origin stories you will complete in the first half of the introduction. You are then forced into the Grey Wardens, a group dedicated to fighting the orc-like creatures called Darkspawn and corrupted dragons. As a Grey Warden you go off to fight the main horde of the Darkspawn to eliminate their threat. But because a video game has to happen, the plans go awry and you are tasked with uniting the races of the land, ending the second half of the intro and beginning the grand adventure. On your adventure, you travel to a few cliche RPG locations. There is a wizard tower, the forest full of elves, the underground city of dwarves, ruins, castles, cities, etc. You will also meet your typical fantasy tropes. Elves that use bows and are one with nature, dwarves that use battle axes and dig, and humans, who are racist, classist, and in general assholes of everyone. While these are stereotypical RPG elements, Bioware has been able to fully develop the world, creating a deep lore for both cities and townsfolk. Characters often have deep backstories that you as a player can delve into via conversations. Throughout your travels, you will gather companions from different locations to help you in your fight. Talking to them will unlock abilities, side quests, and allow you to see their panties. While traveling, they will have little conversations about whatever is going on, which is nice, but they usually start about two meters before the end of the area, making you wait around if you wish to hear the whole thing. In between locations, you can stop and camp, giving you an opportunity to talk to your companions on a deeper level. Building relationships with your companions is a core part of the game and contributed a lot to my positive experience, as it did in similar RPGs such as Mass Effect, KOTOR, and to a lesser extent, Fallout. Although, in my playthrough, this was destroyed by some DLC that gave me access to gifts that gave plus 50 likeability. I suggest avoiding the gifts given for free from merchants because navigating the conversations and getting to know your companions was so enjoyable, and the plus 50 gifts just felt cheap. In my opinion, storytelling and world building are truly the game's biggest highlights, being told mainly through player driven conversations, but also a fairly detailed codex and cutscenes. Tragically, you're a silent protagonist, but positively, you express yourself using a Fallout 3 like interface. Exactly what you're going to say is shown, with options ranging from ultra good guy to selfish to sarcastic little shit. Kotor also has a similar type of conversation tree, along with an equally silent protagonist. Your choice of origin story will affect how others in the world treat you. Elves are seen as slaves, while mages are considered dangerous, and the classless dwarves are looked down upon, where dwarven and human nobles are the upper class. This is a really interesting storytelling device that lets you view the world over the way your character would view the world, and it's something that was completely abandoned in Dragon Age 2. This leads me to the game's role-playing opportunities. Dragon Age offers you a chance to live in the world and adopt the persona of your character to a greater extent than any other RPG I've played. I was a female Dalish elf and played as though I was distrustful of humans, but civil to those who were polite to me and a dick to those who were not. I enjoyed being able to kick back with Alistair in the camp and talk shit, call out Liliana over her racist remarks, and tell a merchant who called me a knife here to go get fucked without thinking about how it would affect the moral system within the game. Take Mass Effect, or to a lesser degree, Fallout 3 or New Vegas. Their binary moral system always felt to me as though you were picking between Mother Teresa or Mecha Hitler. And if you didn't max out the arbitrary good boy or bad boy points, you missed out which results in making decisions based on which side you picked, rather than how your character would react to the situation. And yes, I know you can go neutral in Fallout, but who trusts neutral people? With enemies you know where they stand, but with neutrals, who knows? It sickens me. In terms of combat, it plays a lot like WoW, at least on PC. Controls are similar, if not identical. Right click to start auto attack, then punch buttons to do special moves or spells. You need to manage aggro, and armor influences how much threat is generated, just like WoW. Unlike WoW, you have three other characters you need to worry about, with their own abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. 
Most of the time they'll sort themselves out, but occasionally you'll get into a fight with a large number of baddies or a mini boss, and it all goes to hell quite quickly. Even on medium difficulty I found my squad taking dirt naps in the opening moments of combat, resulting in game over, which wouldn't have been so bad, but the autosave is rubbish. Challenge is good and I appreciate it, but I don't want to have to replay the last half an hour worth of conversations of fights because I died fighting the last mob on the level. I tried going down to easy, but the difference in difficulty is astonishing. Fights became token, and more of a chore. I quickly became bored. I would have appreciated some middle ground. There is an option to go into the menus and alter the character's AI. There are a number of slots where you can input a situation and program how the character would respond, which would have been fantastic and solved all my problems. I would have felt like a medieval programmer, but unfortunately, there wasn't nearly enough spots to create any kind of usable AI and the characters wouldn't do anything that wasn't on the list, apart from target the closest guy. Also, none of the preset tactics contained a command for when their health or mana was low to drink a potion, and changing these presets meant that the command list would not update when you got a new ability. Big miss opportunity. I found that pausing and then issuing commands, then unpausing, was the only way forward. I started to approach combat like you would in KOTOR, only manually, which meant I had to learn all of my companion's abilities and work out plans of attack. This combat style grew on me as I progressed in the story and became more adept, but felt like I was exploiting something that the devs overlooked. I later found out that this is the way the game was intended to be played, and they just did a poor job of telling me. I enjoyed the tactical approach once I got used to it, but I don't think it would suit everyone, and will turn a lot of people off the game. I'm not generally one to complain about micromanagement, but in this game there was a lot. Not only during combat, but also in organizing your companions. They need weapons, armor, trinkets, etc. You'll also need to level them up by assigning stats and abilities for each character. The industry has phased out this complexity, as seen in the recent Fallout 4 or Skyrim, and it's something that I miss, but I know people can find it tedious. The game menus are a bit complex, especially the codex. They can become a sprawling nightmare of useless documents that you need to sift through to find the one you need. I wish I could walk around and do things while I had it open, so I didn't need to go through the whole ordeal multiple times when I'm on a treasure hunt. And while we're on it, I'd like the same thing for the big map. Both are things I can do in most new RPGs. Dragon Age Origins is available on Steam for $30, with all the DLC. And the DLC is definitely worth it. It includes multiple story missions similar in scope to the ones included in Vanilla, a full-on expansion with new companions and a new big bad fight, and an alternative timeline where the protagonist of the main story dies at the beginning and you play as a darkspawn in the climax. The DLC will add a significant amount of time to your game, and at this price it's a pretty good deal. The game is also available on Origin, where you can get the later games in the series that are not available on Steam. On Origin you can purchase the game for the same prices on Steam, but with only some of the DLC, you'll need to get the rest later. Or, and this is what I did and recommend you do, you can sign up for Origin Access, which is $7 a month and gives you access to the game, all of its DLC, as well as the others in the series, for just the subscription fee. I love this game. I found it entertaining and generally comical. I found myself laughing at the game's dry humour all the time, even if I didn't take that conversation option. And with 40 to 80 hours worth of gameplay for a single playthrough, and tons of replayability, I can't really recommend it enough. Just get it in ya. This has been Val reviewing Dragon Age Origins for Haihu. Let me know what you think in the comments, and thanks for watching.